I'm here aboard the Lagoon 55. This recent model from Lagoon is absolutely stunning and I'm going to take you on a little walkthrough of this vessel to show you what this stunning boat has to offer. At 55 feet, this Lagoon is designed to be sailed short-handed. It's big enough to be comfortable, you can live aboard very easily for long distance passages and blue water cruising. But it is also small enough to be handled by a two person liveaboard couple. So it really sits in that balance of not being too big, but not being too small. So come on board and we'll show you through. My name is Joe Fox from the team at TMG. We do hope you enjoy this video. This 55 we're on today has the full decking package. So lovely deck underfoot all the way from the bow through to the stern, the cockpit, flybridge, and also this little area here. So it's got a really nice feel to it. Um, but this kind of relaxation zone, if you like, it's one of a number of them on board. Um, very comfortable, a nice deep footwell. I'm sitting here, it doesn't feel like my ankles are too high. It's the perfect kind of area to, you know, on an evening like we have tonight in, uh, in Khan at the boat show, it'd be great to to sit down and have a lovely relaxing drink. There is a little table here, a bit of place to put your, uh, your soft cheeses and your hams, and also the, uh, the chiller with a bottle of champagne. When you are um, relaxing, spending time here, there is an optional awning as well. So from the front of the, uh, the coach roof on two lovely poles. So it does, it gives good sun protection when you're out here as well, especially in Australia. Another awning option available is a stainless kind of cocoon, which can fold down, runs behind here, but comes up as a nice bit of sun protection as well. So slightly different design, maybe a bit more versatile. Underneath where I'm sitting, we have the generator and system space. Uh, so it's a big technical locker full of electrical equipment. Further forward, two hatches for storage connected to the chain locker. So very easily you can get in and sort your chain out if you're having problems with that. Underneath the combing here is the anchor. So it's nice and hidden away when you're not using it, but you obviously open it to drop the anchor. On the bow, the trademark bowsprit used for flying a Code Zero or any asymmetrical finnaker. Now on the bow of each hull, there is what I like to call a little princess seat. Now it's not that little, it's a lot bigger than the, than the smaller models, um, but you could get two people here or comfortably an adult and a child. It's a great place to sit when you're sailing be out the front and feel the, the freedom of the open ocean. At the front of each bow as well, we have two storage lockers. So these are very deep, plenty of storage for sails, lines, fenders. These can also be optioned as crew cabins. So it gives you extra accommodation. Moving aft, there is a lot of space down either side of the boat. There is a molded handrail here, uh, which works very nicely with the lines of the, of the coach roof, um, but it gives a, a nice sense of security as you're heading down the side of the boat side access so if you're parked next to another boat or on a dock where you can't access the transom for boarding there is a side access with a ladder which goes down the side of the hull if required so moving down the port side of the boat we come into what is probably the best part about this new model lagoon 55 this cockpit is absolutely huge so down the starboard side of the cockpit we have two individual tables now these double in size to become one massive table so you could have maybe eight to 10 people dining around here very comfortably with a few chairs down here. There is massive underfloor storage as well because of the gap between the deck and the actual bridge deck. There is a lot of storage all accessible very easily. On the port side of the cockpit, the wet bar is in a really nice position. It doesn't get in the way. It takes up quite a bit of space, but the benefit of that is that the fridge inside is huge and we have an ice maker and storage as well with a sink in the top. Just after the wet bar is a aft-facing sun lounge, day bed, great place to chill out. You know, there are lots of places to chill out on this vessel. On the starboard side of the cockpit, we also have another day bed. So just adding to the comfort. The cushions on this model are nice and thick and there's plenty of storage as well underneath all the seating. There are optional clears, which again, you can see zipped into the black combing around the top. These can come down to enclose this space, just like upstairs if it is too windy or raining. Now possibly the best part about the cockpit on the 55 is this endless beach that we have here. Now we don't have a seating across the back like on the smaller models and even the bigger models, but this does give you an incredibly open feeling. The tender lift does come all the way up to deck level. It's lowered at the moment. And this gate here at the back does open. So you can essentially increase the size of the cockpit when the tender lift hasn't got the dinghy on it. Tender lift does also drop down 
underwater to make access to and from the water incredibly easy. It is full width, so you can step off one transom easily onto the platform and make your way all the way across the back without having to come up the stairs, across here, and down the stairs. One feature on this model I really like is the lateral side access stairs. So this, you know, instead of having the traditional stairs up the transom here, they're offset and it allows us to have a built-in barbecue, which is the best place for a barbecue on a boat, to be honest. It's at the back of the boat. If you're on a mooring or anchored, all the wind is gonna be blowing the smoke and all the smells straight off the boat. So it's not going into the cabin. This closes for storage and it's, you know, really cool little barbecue area. So over on the starboard side, it's a similar setup, albeit without the barbecue. But what we have here is the bathing ladder for access to and from the water. A seat for relaxing and chilling and drying off in the sun. There is also a shower here for rinsing off when you come out of the ocean. Access to the flybridge is on the port side connected to the cockpit. There is a solid railing that goes along here so you're not actually going outboard onto the deck to get onto the flybridge so you feel very secure as you come up. I have to say this is probably the best flybridge in this size of catamaran in the market. It's absolutely huge. We have a, a helm station over on starboard. One single helm, that's all you really need on a boat of this size combined with a very nice L-shaped bench for dining. Now this is a massive teak table which folds up and with a couple of chairs down here and one on the end, you'd have eight people up here, no problem. You know, I'm six foot, so we've got plenty of headroom up here as well for the tall ones. This sun lounge on the back is absolutely awesome. It's the best, one of the best spots to sit on the boat. Very, very romantic, relaxing with a glass of wine. And you could probably get six people across the stern here, all looking aft. So you got lots of options for the sundowners, that's for sure. Across the back of the coach roof, the Bimini, we obviously have the um, Traveller with the main sheet system. This Bimini that's on above us at the moment, as I mentioned, is nice and high. It comes with integrated clears as well. So they're actually all zipped into a fabric stowaway around the underside of it, but they can be dropped down to enclose this whole space. So if it's windy or a little bit of rain, or you just want to be a bit warmer when you're sailing at night, that encloses this whole space very nicely. In the roof, we do have two massive skylights. So no matter what position the boom is, you can always see up and look at the top of the mast from a number of positions in this bridge. Every great entertaining space needs somewhere to prepare the food and the drinks. Now inside this wet bar, it has really everything you'd need. Freshwater sink, a food prep area, a fridge just here, and some storage. So it's a great, great place. It saves all those little trips downstairs to the main galley when you are relaxing and entertaining up here. I haven't mentioned this yet, but dotted around the boat in convenient locations, we do have these fantastic pop-up lights so you can see what you're doing when the sun does go down. Just forward of the wet bar, we have the ever important helm station. I think this is a fantastic position. It's not central, you're obviously offset. Benefits of that is that you don't have the mast right in front of you. So I've actually got incredibly clear vision. You don't really see this pole and yeah, it's a great place to steer from. You could fit two adults seated here very comfortably. There is a flip up bolster. So you get a bit more space or you know something a bit higher to perch on. And then on this one, we have a lovely carbon fiber wheel. 16 inch Raymarine plotter with all the MFDs, the multifunction display, as well as your navigation lights, running light and anchor control. This boat's also fitted with a bow thruster and just above are your engine controls. These are nicely tucked away, but very accessible. From where I'm standing, this is where I'd be when I'm parking the boat. I can see all the way down the side of the boat. I can see my crew members on the transom and I can reach the throttles here. So a great layout here for sure. The working deck for sailing the Lagoon 55 is very simple and nicely laid out. Great rope storage pockets everywhere. Um, three electric winches up here on the flybridge and um, it's all routed very, uh, very neatly. The main sheet traveler on the Lagoon 55 is controlled via a flat winder, which is located further aft um, from an electric button here. So effortless control of the, uh, the main sheet traveler. As we move forward of the flybridge cockpit, we have a fantastic sun lounging area. This is optional and underneath there are two skylight windows. So when the cushions are not fitted or when you don't order them, you get plenty of natural light coming into the saloon. So chilling spot number three on board the Lagoon 55. As with a lot of the lagoons, we also have the self-tacking head cell. 
So it's really effortless sailing. Again, it goes back to what I said at the beginning about sailing the boat shorthanded or just a couple. It's a very simple tacking and jibing process. This 55 is also fitted with a aluminium canoe boom. Now this is what we see on the much bigger boats, the 77 and the 65, but this just makes it easier and more effective way of managing the mainsail when you're dropping it, especially on a boat this size. We can also do a carbon canoe boom as well as the aluminium. The standard mast is aluminium, which you can option as painted as well, which we have on this one, which is what we see on a lot of big boats as well. Moving from the cockpit into the saloon, we're greeted with a very spacious area. To starboard, we have the galley, massive L-shaped galley with double sink system, pull tap as well, which is fantastic. Loads of food prep area and a, a really impressive looking four burner hob. There is an oven just below it and the standard fridge is right here. So I think this is one of the best galleys that we have in the range. Just things like a massive dishwasher, which is fantastic. Plenty of underfloor storage, it is very deep, and we have got four underfloor lockers inside the saloon in total. So plenty of storage space, food prep space, microwave storage above the worktop there. The port side of the saloon, we've got the chart table, 12 inch Raymarine plotter connected to the same system as we have upstairs, really for all your monitoring, a good sized chart table with plenty of storage inside and underneath and overhead. At the forward end of the saloon, we have the dining table, this does double in size and it's lowerable as well electronically so that you can turn this into more accommodation if you need it. Plenty of little storage nooks along the front of the saloon as well. You know, you can see we've got a couple of books in there at the moment. So you're not struggling to find places to put stuff, especially on a sailing boat. In the roof, we have a retractable TV. So this will drop down and be viewed nice and easily from the lounging area here. Now, while I was on the flybridge, I did talk about the skylights in the roof. There are cushions on top at the moment, but these are absolutely huge. There are lockout blinds on them as well. So if you don't have the cushions and you don't want the light coming in, you can lock that out. Also, a fantastic piece of ventilation. There is actually no glass in this window. So there's a drop down window, um, but the whole thing opens up. So really nice airflow coming in. You can pass drinks out. It creates a nice kind of seamless connection between the cockpit, the saloon, and the forward cockpit. So I think it, it integrates with the whole boat really well. Making our way down into the port hull, we have two spacious cabins here. Make our way to the aft section first. The accommodation on the 55 is quite something to be admired. So on this vessel, all the beds in the cabins are athwart ships. Now, what this does is it maximizes the space available in the cabin and just generally creates a, a better layout because we're on a vessel that's big enough to accommodate a thwartship beds. Lots of natural light coming in. Again, this is a light interior boat, so it's very light and airy. Plenty of clever storage and a convenient writing desk slash workstation. Just forward and at the front end of the cabin, we have the ensuite toilette. A very high level of fit out in here, Corian uh, worktop with a Corian floor in the shower as well. Electric flush toilet with hull windows and ventilation as well. The shower compartment is separated from the main washroom area and the compartment itself is quite large with a convenient shelf and storage pocket for all your bathroom essentials. Moving forward out of the VIP cabin, we come into a bit of a utility area here, which is uh, in the passageway, great use of space, but we have a massive fridge. So this is a second fridge in addition to the standard one that we had in the galley. Fridge up top, freezer down the bottom. Next to the fridge, we have an option for a washer dryer. Now you can either have a washer dryer or a washer and a dryer. Choice is yours, plenty of great storage. Otherwise, if you don't choose that second two-part option. On the inboard side of the hull, there is again massive storage for towels, linen, bed sheets, what have you. The bow guest cabin on the port side, a thwartships bed again, as per the stern cabin, with the, at the head of the toilet and shower all the way up in the front of the hull. Plenty of storage, a very comfortable cabin. So we'll make our way now to the starboard side. So on the starboard side, we have two cabins as well but we don't have the utility area and this enables the master or the owner cabin to be much larger. So let's go take a look.
Up in the very bow, we have another guest cabin, another thwartships bed with the bathroom all the way up in the bow, very similar to what we have on the other side at the front end of the hull. As I turn right when I come down to the companionway into this hull, this cabin is absolutely huge on a vessel of this size. Immediately to my left, we have a completely separate toilet compartment, which is a fantastic feature. Just after that, we have the wash basin, storage, lovely mirror, just a single sink in this cabin. And then just after that, behind a glass screen. So this is actually part of the main cabin, but it's behind a shower screen. So it's, it's quite a clever, clever layout, this very spacious shower. Same finishing throughout the boat in all the bathrooms. Lovely Corian finishing, Corian on the floor. And of course, privacy blinds. But every cabin and every bathroom has natural light, uh, which I think is quite an important thing to mention. The main area of the master cabin is absolutely stunning. Plenty of mood lighting, plenty of natural light. We've actually got four large windows, including the deck hatch. So it makes this space, you know, even on a bright day with the lights off, a nice place to be. On the starboard side, as you enter the cabin, a two person bench, nice place to sit and uh, while you're putting your shoes on. And down this inboard side of the master cabin, again, I keep going on about storage, but there is absolutely heaps of it. Another storage locker here. So there is plenty, plenty of space to put all your stuff. As you come to the aft end, this is the same size bed that we have in the VIP cabin on the other side in the same orientation. So it's a nice setup here because when you are lying in bed, you've got a fantastic view out of the windows. Same as on the other side, we have the writing desk workstation, whatever you want to call it, nice place to sit. That concludes the walkthrough on this Lagoon 55. A very comfortable vessel, a great new model from Lagoon, and it's great to see it here at the boat show in all its glory. They are very popular, um, but if you would like to, to find out more about this model, do get in touch with the TMG team or myself. My name is Joe Fox. Thanks for joining us on this walkthrough. If you did enjoy this video, do like and subscribe. It'd be great to have your feedback, and we'll look forward to having you along next time.